Hi. So I'm going to keep this really simple. Um, I can't beat the Lida story. Um, I think I'm the youngest here. Um, but I had a little bit of excitement in the last seven years of my career. Um, what I'm going to talk to you about is, I'm going to talk to you about the three biggest mistakes, or probably the three mistakes I'm aware of um, in the last seven years. Um, these mistakes are really personal. Um, I hope uh, all of you go through them. Um, because if you commit mistakes, what do you do with it? Very simple. You learn from it. I'm going to keep it really, really simple so that everyone understands. Um, I'm also going to talk about, with these mistakes, what I learned. I come from India. Yeah, this India. This India. This India. And this India. So it's a combination of, of modern and old India. Uh, we like to call it, I am new India. Um, it has taught me a lot of things. It has made me meet a lot of people. Uh, we are the fastest growing economy. Um, we, have, we have over 460 million internet users uh, using internet every day. So yes, there's a huge opportunity for, lo for all of you. Um, I'm going to start my story now. Uh, my name is Prakar Kanduja. Um, I was born in 92. Um, I come from a really small family, uh, a lower middle class family in a small town in India. I was never a great student. Um, I scored average. I went to a Catholic school to obviously learn English um, so that I can go abroad, like most Indians. Um, I did not give any competitive exams. Um, I was too lazy or maybe not smart. So I ended up at a shitty university uh, in North India where I just spent most of my time partying. I eventually dropped out in my final year. Um, I was fake inspired by by Mark Zuckerberg, I thought, hey, I'm going to change the world. Um, but you know what? I mean, it didn't quite happen. Um, so my first mistake was dropping out of college. I dropped out of college just because of arrogance. I was too arrogant. I thought dropping out of college will be really cool and everything will be luxurious. But trust me, it's not about babes, boobs, boobs and billions. Trust me, it's not. I spent, um, so yeah, culturally in India, it's, it's very difficult to, to not have a degree. Um, I thought I'm, gonna chase, I'm chasing my dreams, but what was actually happening was I was breaking my parents' dreams. Um, so culturally in India, if, if, no matter, you, you, you become a billionaire, but if you don't have a degree, your parents won't respect you. Um, you might not get a future wife. Um, you will definitely not get, get investors because for first-time entrepreneurs, what they look at is they just look at people from, from great colleges. So I had no money. Um, I left my parents' house. I was like, hey, what do I do? So I joined a call center. Yeah, that's me. That's actually me. <laughs> I might have received um, maybe you know, one of your calls um, doing tech support. Um, I spent the next one year working at call centers at nights and meeting people during the day. What it made me realize is, hey, I'm an outsider to this world. I got to make, I, I got to build my own identity. After one year of, of, of sleepless nights, I ended up with my first gig at a startup, um, which where I later co-founded uh, a company called Instahire. Uh, yeah, so it was the first auction-based recruitment platform. Um, we hit uh, about 600 paying customers in seven, in seven months. Um, we were making about $2 million as profit in the first year. Um, but hey, you know what? I was stupid again. What happened is I realized that, you know, if I can achieve all of this in just one year, I'm a hustler. That's the new term in today's world. If you don't have talent, hustle. <laughs> that works, by the way. It works. It worked out for me. So I hustled my way around building the first ever recruitment company to, in India to clock $2 million as profit. But then, um, as I said, by the way, I'm, I'm actually a, I'm a 26-year-old guy with a, with a teenage heart. So I think like a teenager, I act like a teenager. So 
by this time I realized, hey, I am, you know, I, I have, I have cracked the art of entrepreneurship. Uh, the next Bill Gates is going to be Prakar Kanduja. Um, so I was like, hey, let me quit this. Let me start another company. So what I did was I, I, I quit, I, I quit InstaHire and I started another company. I wanted, I had a vision. I will create the India's first video streaming platform. This is back in 2013. There was no 4G, there was no 3G. Um, but what I realized is I don't know how to code. Um, what I ended up doing was I ended up finding a guy. It was really, really, really difficult for me um, because at this time, what I wanted to do was, yeah, I wanted to be the CEO. I wanted everything to be mine. But eventually, I had to find one guy who could code, who was a brilliant coder. Um, I lost a little bit of confidence because, hey, I mean, this is my company. Why do I give, give you a part of it? I ended up building, the, building an excellent team. Um, I was, again, broke. I took 22 flights in seven days to raise my first round. And uh, at one point of time, I did not have money because, I mean, my parents weren't supporting me. So I slept almost uh, for two weeks in my car. Um, it's, it sounds funny, but the interesting thing is, you save a lot of money. <laughs> I'm not kidding. I am not even kidding. Yeah. My, next, my second mistake was not learning how to code. So non-tech founders, I would advise start taking classes. Because you don't want to give any part of your equity to someone you don't know, unless you have like best friends who can you know, sort of you know, negotiate with. Um, I ended up building, building Inslively, the first live streaming app of YouTube. Um, I still own multiple patents for that. Raised investment from everyone in India, you name it. I was the hottest startup. Um, top social app in six countries. Uh, one of the first live streaming app to work on, on 2G. Then later, what I realized is, hey, um, I'm going to create another app. I created another app. Uh, we reached uh, 500K DAUs in less than two months. Then, interestingly, in less than um, two months of launch, I got, a, I got two calls, one from YouTube, one from Tencent. They're like, hey, we want to buy you out. I eventually sold my company to Tencent. Um, yeah, I was happy. <laughs> but this whole process made me an awesome businessman. I did not know how to, how to code. I realized that team has to be built by two people. One has to be a coder. One has to run the business. So I became an awesome businessman. I was this guy. I became fucking Ari Gold. I was the guy who was cracking deals. My last mistake, I'm going to end shortly. Yeah? In this whole process, I realized that I think I sold too early. My products were futuristic. I was still young. I was still, what, 20, 23 years old. Um, but what happened in the deal, I ended up, uh, my company was sold to Tencent, and Tencent gave it to its portfolio company in India called Hike Messenger. They say that startups are like babies, so probably I was the worst parent ever. Um, but it turned out to be pretty OK. Um, I worked on different projects. Um, at such a young age, it's very, it's, I mean, it's something which people imagine. People who go to great colleges, they go through that. I launched the first social payments app of India. I acquired 23 million users in less than two months. Um, built multiple social apps inside Hike. Um, and towards the end of it, I realized that life is not about money. Life is not about getting famous. Life is not about getting rich. Um, whatever happens, happens for good. Um, I started believing in fate. I started believing in, in who I am. And I started believing in people I work with. I'm going to now end with just one thing. If you think you're lost right now, you're not. You're just early in the process. Just work hard, believe in, in what you guys are doing. Um, just be very practical. Don't get too emotional with your startups. You're running a business, not a baby. And if you do mistakes, accept it and move on. Yeah, thank you.